to my lecture series on harmonic distortion. This is video 10. Uh, slide numbers will be in the bottom right. Why I don't worry about the fourth harmonic? I'm going to explain that in terms of math. There's one thing to give you an opinion. You can get an opinion anywhere, but we're going to go through the math. I'm not going to go into, I'm going to show all the steps, but I'm not going to go into a lot of great detail. I'm just basically going to uh, narrate down through what's going on. You can always stop the video later and check my math. I think I'm fairly bulletproof. Never know. Always have that possibility. Video 6 I covered at the top. Video 5, video 7, video 9. In this video I'm going to talk about the fourth term. As I've shown in the last video, the fourth term contains cos 4 omega t. That is the fourth harmonic. I'm not going to ever get to the fifth harmonic because this is a stopping point. From the third order harmonic, this is the terms that we have. These are the terms we have. So the only thing I have to do is take the, it one more step. So I'm going to take this times the third order terms to get my fourth order harmonic term. So I break it down by pieces. Third times the first part plus the same terms uh, times the second part to give me both parts. Then I take those and I regroup them and then I have issues with sine squared and I've got this sine, a cosine sine term I want to convert to all sine. So I do that. Here are my first orders, second orders, third order because of uh, things like this is left behind but I've converted this. I still have a cosine and a cosine and they're two omega t. We have to reorder this as we've shown on screen. I still have cosine terms which need to be converted to sine. I do that. Everything's now uniform, standard, simplified. I combine my terms so I have my fundamental, my second order, third, fourth. I have my third order terms from the last video, my fourth order terms from this video, I combine them and we have the same five talking points. I mean consists of I sub zero and that's this term here. These terms, here's the new terms uh, with no signal. And then the DC rectification I've added in two terms to that. The fundamental way, uh, frequency has new terms. The signal has become altered again. It gets more complex. The second order has become more complex. And then, you know, the fifth part. So the unwanted signal has three parts. Second, third, and fourth harmonic. Which way does this shift? Again, this doesn't determine it. This does. And because A3 is exceedingly less than A2, and A4 is exceedingly less than A3, I can ignore, for that reason, what A3 and A4, what these terms are going to do to A2. Because while A3 takes some value off of A2, A4 is going to add something back in, but it's minuscule. So the second order harmonic is going to shift based on the coefficient of a2 it moves it to the right and down here a4 is a negative value negative and a negative is going to move it to the left for reference purposes whether you're left or a right person this is my frame of reference this is how I worked out the problem second order we've talked about in the last video or yeah the sec the second the video on the second order harmonic the uh, fourth shows up here and it shifts 90 degrees but it shifts um, relative to the fundamental minus 22 degrees or half of 45. What that does is the second and the fourth order harmonic line up on the first peak. They're in line with. As you get subsequent har uh, even harmonics it's going to be a put and take the whole time but it will line up there as you do the methodology as I've shown you in my videos. Third order harmonic, this is how we set it up. 
we want in an equation at I-90, 135, 225, and 270. Here are the radians at the bottom. I picked those points on purpose because the second order harmonic is zero at those, in, at those points. That's the way we do that. And I know that the sine of uh, 313, or 315 is minus uh, h3 over square root of 2. Now then, I'm going to combine third order with fourth order terms, and I'm going to look at this. So when you're looking at I mean, you're looking at A1, A2, A3, A4. You're looking at H, the H values. What do I want to do with these values? And it would indicate to you that if A2 is going to be represented by H2, it's going to be positive. And H3, since A3 is negative, it's going to be negative. And H4 is going to be positive. So I mean would equal this based on the signs of the DC rectification component. However, when you look at this, when you pick, we're going to pick up one more equation because we need five equations now. We pick up one. So I mean actually is that fifth equation, but there's no uh, H3 term because at H3 the fundamental and third order harmonic are zero. I mean is equal to I0 plus H2 plus H4. I know H4 is po going positive and H2 is going negative. We don't have to worry about the signs really. Whatever the signs work out to be, they'll work out to be. But those two components, H2 and H4 plus I0, determine the value of H mean. And then, at the top, I, uh, I90 is equal to I mean plus H1 plus H2 plus H4 minus H3. Over here, it's plus, minus H1 plus H2 plus H3 plus H4. Again, we've picked 135 and 225, 270 on purpose because we know where the nodes are hitting. And we know that it's zero for uh, the second harmonic at these points. And now we have five equations that we have to solve. Same thing. We want to add and subtract equations in order to remove a term. So when I, I subtract equations two and four, this is what I'm going to end up with, and I'm going to call this 2, 4, subtract. If I add equations 2 and 4, I get this. So I'm canceling out terms in order to eventually, you, still, you keep, uh, and then I'll probably use these in conjunction with other equations in order to reduce the number of terms down where I can actually solve for one remaining variable. It's just this process that keeps going on. If you were to do the fifth, fourth, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th harmonic, you would do this. There's just more steps involved. It doesn't get any more complicated, just more steps involved. 1 and 5, I add and subtract those to get these equations in order to get in terms of uh, the even harmonics and odd harmonics. I solve it down using these two resulting equations, and I can solve for H1. And then I can solve for H3. Solving for an odd harmonic, if you were to continue this, is the easiest thing to do because those equations fall out fairly quick. It's the even ones that are, take a little longer. So I, then I sub I mean. This generally in the even order harmonics, you have to have I mean in in order to cancel out a term and get you down to one of the even harmonic calculations. So here's H2. And here's H4. I mean then, rather than leave it in terms of H2 and H4, I substitute those newly found terms into it, so I now have H mean in terms of current values. So this is what I end up with. So here's I mean, H1, H2, H3, H4. Here are the percent harmonics that you can calculate or rather these are. Um, the reason I don't care about the fourth harmonic is that, 
If I have a tube set up, say a power tube, class A operation, and it's designed to idle at 75 milliamps, uh, the fourth harmonic will lower I mean about 1%, or about 1 milliamp out of 75 milliamps. It's nothing to write home about. It's like I'm bored here, guys. It looks like this. So from a program, I, I took a screenshot. Uh, I've set the, I adjusted the, the load line against a speaker curve until I have, I show 7% second order harmonic. The third is going to be 0.07, and the fourth harmonic is going to be higher because you know they they travel in packs. If the second goes up, the fourth is going to go up because it's an even multiple. So here's the fourth harmonic. When we look at this, so if I push my signal, a dynamic load line, right to the zero grid line, I'm going to exceed that by about 6 milliamps. As I've shown you before, 6 milliamps is going to raise the temperature up. And I'll show that to you here. It's 6 milliamps. I'm going to raise the grid wire about 136 degrees. 1 milliamp doesn't really affect it much. So uh, that doesn't make much difference. It's the uh, other 5 milliamps that I have to worry about. This is okay. It, it doesn't heat the grid up a lot, especially on a power tube. But it's something to pay attention to. But more, but because you are uh, putting current through the grid at this point, the idea would be this to pull this uh, bias point down to say uh, maybe 68 uh, milliamps on the idle. So I don't exceed that line. And for linear operation, that may be fine. For ultra linear operation, I also may want to reduce the travel or the span of the input signal to the power tube in order that it operates more uniformly across a smaller span across the bias point than I have shown on screen. That's it for the fourth harmonic. Thank you for watching.